Welcome back to Retro Tech. I'm Steve. Today we are looking at some new items I've recently gotten here in my shop. First we're going to take a look at the two new monitors I picked up. I had a chance to get a trade with one of the Patreons. He was able to pick up the 20 inch PVM he wanted and to help him save some money he turned in a 13 inch monitor. It's a little bit different than the ones we've worked on in the past so I think it'll be a great thing to cover in some videos. So without any more introduction let's go ahead and look at the two monitors. Here's the first look at monitor number one, the Panasonic BT-H1350Y. This is a 13 inch color video CRT monitor. It is high resolution and should have a line count of around 600 TV lines. At first glance you'll notice a lot of the same type of buttons on this monitor that you will see on other CRTs and high-end video monitors. Things like color adjustment, screen brightness adjustment, as well as input selections. We have a volume selector and a couple of screen size settings. The first thing to note is there is no on-screen menu with this monitor. Now we're looking behind the monitor and you can see we've already removed our shell. What we want to look at first is our input board over here. This is where our video input and output signals will be going. First we've got standard S-Video and composite inputs. These are BNC connectors for the composite inputs and outputs. We've got two lines for those. And then we've got an external sync input and output in case we need some kind of external sync for composite in. And then we've got the important input which is RGB slash YPBPR which is component input. And then we've got a color temperature selector as well as our switch to toggle between RGB and component. Since this monitor does not have an on-screen menu We'll have to use potentiometers and other adjustments to make screen and setting adjustments on this CRT. First we've got our screen settings over here on the back of our flyback and then we've got a card here with a lot of different potentiometers as well as a few here on the main board. Now these will control our colors as well as our geometry settings for our screen. Let's take one last look inside our monitor back here. We can notice we've got an extreme amount of dust and sediment built up on all our components as well as on our shielding here. We've got a lot of dirt and sediment just from never being cleaned. This particular monitor was manufactured in Osaka, Japan in February of 1996. Well, at least the chassis was. And then I've got a chassis identifier and some other model numbers as well as other identifying marks on these labels. Our next steps are going to be to discharge the monitor, take it apart, and then clean the boards and all the sediment built up in here. While we're doing that, we'll also inventory all the capacitors that are on the chassis here, and most of those will get ordered and replaced. Here we have monitor number two. This is also a Panasonic Color Video CRT monitor. This one's a medical monitor. The model number is MT1340G. Now this one has a different build out as well as it is an older monitor. It's from 1990 and there's the adjustment knobs are inside this push down thing here on the front. We've got all our adjustment knobs down here at the bottom and then we've got a power button and a volume knob. And here we have the back of monitor number two. Again, MT1340G, manufactured in 1990. Here's our input area over here. We've only got BNC connectors for in and out, and that's composite in and composite out. And then we have our audio in and out. But you'll notice this very old RGB input that's very similar to a VTR pinout. And this is for an older style RGB that we will not be using so this monitor will actually be used for parts and I'll explain why. I'm back in the front of the Panasonic 1350 monitor which is the better of the two monitors and I'm trying to zoom in here on the screen and maybe you can make it out just slightly there is some screen burn right along here we've got a couple of numbers that show up just very faintly in this gray so that's the reason I'm going to use the other one for parts they use the same shadow mask tube, so we're going to transplant the tube from this monitor. We're going to use that darker, older tube 
and we're going to place it inside this monitor and have it set up on the new chassis. Alright, so our plan is to take the Panasonic tube out of this monitor and basically swap them back and forth. I'll still put this old one hopefully in here, that way I can hold it in there for parts for now. But I'd really like to see that tube on this chassis so we can see if we can get some better picture quality. So we're going to have a couple videos coming up. The next will be the teardown of this and then the following video will be the tube swap as well as the testing, calibration, etc. We'll put that in the second video. So two-parter of a teardown and then a put back together. Thanks again for watching Retro Tech. I want to again thank the Patreons and especially Justin for doing the trade with me and let me have this Panasonic so we could do some experiments and some work on it. If you're interested in becoming a patron, please follow the link for Patreon in the channel description. That way you can get more details on how the whole sales and repair club works. I think it will be something that will be very beneficial to anyone who has CRTs. Once again, I'm Steve with Retro Tech. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.